Okay, I have now moved over to working in my tablet. And in this video, we're going to be uh, projecting our image that we created onto the surface of this ring. And first, though, before I start, um, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to want to kind of smooth out the surface so I can get rid of some, some of this faceting. And that's going to allow me to talk about some of the tools in ZBrush. Um, in fact, before I worry about smoothing, let's just take a look at the surface here, because this is a nice flat surface, and I can talk about a few of the tools just by drawing directly on that. By default in ZBrush, we have the standard tool, and you see that, I should say, the standard brush, and that's what's selected here. We have a default size to our uh, brush at the moment. If I just click and drag, this is what I get. Nice, cool drawing on the surface. Um, there's a lot of other tools. <laughs> I don't end up using the standard brush that often, but it is just sort of the, the default one. And it allows me to talk about a few things. One, if you want to change the size of your tool, you can do that by changing it up here at the draw size. This will make that uh, the head of the tool bigger or smaller. All right. Um, I typically use a shortcut for that, which is just the S key. Hit S, and then this little draw size menu will pop up. If you sort of drag away from it, it will disappear. But if you keep the mouse where you where it was when you press the S key, you can click and drag and change that, which is nice. Now I'm just going to make this big for the moment so we can talk about fall off. You see here that um, there's quite a bit of fall off from the center of the draw stroke to the edges. And that has to do with what you can see here as these two circles. Uh, the closer the circles are to each other, the less fall off there's going to be. And the farther away that middle circle is from the outer circle, the more fall off there's going to be. So if I change that, um, the option for that is focal shift. So if I decrease the focal shift, you'll notice that the two circles start getting closer together. There's less fall off. Right? We'll talk about why we see a whole bunch of little circles here in a moment. Um, and if I decrease that, or I should say increase that, there's in fact a lot of fall off happening, a re really rapid fall off actually, and it looks like the brush stroke has gotten really thin, but it hasn't. What about these little um, circles? <laughs> They're not very nice, right? Uh, most of the time I don't end up with a fall off that is a focal shift, that's what I'm seeing here, but um, if you do, that has to do with your stroke type. And so we had the brush menu up here, and underneath that we have some stroke types, and that's currently set to dots. That's actually a performance issue thing. So uh, ZBrush will work faster on some slower uh, machines without getting, you know, without starting to lag if instead of drawing a continuous stroke, it draws a series of dots. And for the most often, you won't really be able to tell the difference, but in this case, you definitely are able to tell the difference. So if I click on stroke, you can see that I have a few other options. Um, if I go to freehand, this should actually give me a little bit better uh, stroke, but it's not. And I think if I come into the stroke menu here and change, let's change this real quick. Now, maybe I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I thought I did. Oh man. It really sucks when you're trying to create a tutorial and you only think you know what you're doing, but you don't really know what you're doing. Um, okay, I, I'm sure that I'm actually able to change this, and I thought I was able to do that with simply freehand, but I might be mistaken. I might be thinking about Photoshop at the moment. So ignore everything I've just said. Um, that's okay. Because, to be honest, um, the, the truth is that you're never really going to end up with a focal shift this small. So... <laughs> Uh, if you don't notice it, no big deal. And you can always smooth things out as well. So if I if I did, just for the sake of example, go back to that focal shift, I'm like, oh, look at all those extra circles there. If I wanted to smooth this out, um, the shortcut for doing that is to just hold down the shift key while you're drawing. And notice that that automatically changes that to a smooth brush. So while I'm holding down shift, I can just kind of click and drag, and that does a nice job smoothing it out there. All right. So not too bad in the end. Right. Okay. Undo, undo, undo. All right, so that's the standard brush. Um, I do use the standard brush, but it's not the one that I use most often. 
here's all the other brushes. If you click on the brush menu, you'll see a whole bunch of ones pop up. I have some custom ones in here, uh, but for the most part, these are uh, most of these are the default ones. So, in fact, actually, they might all be the default ones. I think I have ZBrush 4R5 as well. I think that's the one that I have the custom brushes in. So here's what I often use. Um, I'll use clay buildup quite a bit. Uh, clay as well. Um, let's just take a look at clay buildup real quick. Clay buildup's a great one for when you're doing any real sculpting. Okay, this functions very much like clay itself. And it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing here unless I come from the side. Right? And this is just like layering on a whole bunch of extra um, blobs of clay, which I would then go in and kind of smooth down by holding shift. Right? This is pretty ugly at the moment, but it does kind of give you an example of what's, what you're capable of doing here. Right? I just find that a very organic process to work in. Uh, so I do use clay buildup quite a bit. And I also, like I said, I will use clay. It's similar, it's just not quite as fast, and it's a little bit more sort of computery. The clay buildup I find to be a bit more organic. So it's okay. Uh, if I go to, let's see, what other ones do I use quite a bit? Um, I noticed that on the forum some people were talking about using damn standard. You can, right? Just kind of gouges into the surface there. Not really a brush I typically use, but yeah, definitely usable. My recommendation is you know, just go through here and try all the different brushes, but most of them you're not going to use, to be completely honest. So clay, clay buildup, um, damn standard apparently, you know, uh, according to somebody else. Um, I use um, flatten sometimes, I use H polish. This is just for polishing off corners, for instance, to make things a little bit more filleted. I also use inflate at times. That's more of an organic thing. It will inflate out um, something, you know, it's kind of like, I guess, adding air into a balloon animal in a way. Um, what else do I use? Uh, well, that's about it. I, I pretty much, well, I, oh, sorry, I also use trim dynamic and trim adaptive. This is a bit strange because I, I have a workspace that has all of those um, tools that I always use across the bottom and now I have to actually think about what the tools are and where they are. So uh, Trim Dynamic is just kind of a nice way of going through and and kind of like using a, a knife on your actual clay itself it cuts into the surface. We're not really going to use that too much here but um, it's good for organic modeling. Right? And I would go through and I would soften that out and just by holding down shift to smooth it out. Right? So not too bad. Undo, undo, undo. Okay, so when we get started with um, with our model here, I did mention that I wanted to smooth out the surface because it is quite uh, faceted at the moment. If I want to do this quickly and easily, I would like to be able to mirror whatever I'm drawing on this side over on this side. And I can do that by just hitting the X key. X uh, stands for X symmetry, so symmetry across the X axis. So the uh, y-axis here is up and down, the x-axis is across here, and the z-axis would be, of course, going in this direction. All right, so um, and, and if you're looking for where your symmetry tools are in general, they are under, uh, I, think it's, I think it's stroke, modifiers, oops, I keep thinking. This is its trouble now that I'm under the pressure of actually creating a tutorial, remembering where everything is. Um, transform, not stroke, transform. There they are. Uh, transform. Activate symmetry. As soon as I hit the X key, it turns symmetry on, but I can also change symmetry to Y and Z here as well. So in case you are looking to, if you have a, a ring, for instance, that gives you the ability to work in the sym symmetry across those axes, then there you go. Turn those ones on as well. All right. So. Um, if I start in here and I simply just hold down the shift key and I start um, smoothing through here, notice that uh, be a little careful. It does kind of pull things in on the edges as well. It won't be too big of a deal here unless you're working with some really, really precise geometry. But for my purposes, yeah, not too bad. If, this, if the smoothing is too much, uh, and for instance, you can see that it's kind of causing problems up here. I'll undo that. If the smoothing's too much, you can change that. I'm holding down shift still. 
Um, while I'm holding down shift, obviously I'm in the smooth brush and the intensity that I change now affects just the smooth brush and not the other brush that was previously there. So um, that will just be a slightly uh, lesser degree of smooth. I will probably simply want to um, not end up smoothing off the top or like smoothing off this um, lip and there is a way I can do that. In ZBrush if you want to mask off an area that you don't want to affect um, you can just hold down control and uh, draw on the surface. You can see that will do a good job of creating this mask um, and this means that whatever you're doing with the tools will not affect that area. However that mask um, you can see it really easily overflows the edges there. So that's not necessarily what I want. I'm going to try another option here. This one's a little bit more tricky, but it is quite, use, quite useful to um, keep in mind. Uh, so let me undo that. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to be jumping around in ZBrush so much, but there are so many little different things that you use so often that it is kind of necessary for me to do so. So right now I am in uh, draw mode, right? Uh, sorry, I'm in edit mode and I'm creating stuff on the surface here. But there are a couple other modes I can move into. For instance, if I go into the Move tool, this allows me to um, actually move the object around. <laughs> this is ZBrush's version of, you know, a, a, a move handle. Uh, there's a Scale tool, Rotate tool. I'm not going to go into these right now because it's a bit cumbersome. I'm not a real big fan of it in ZBrush. But I do need to be in the Move tool in order to take advantage of this option which is if I hold down control and click and drag out with the move tool, you'll see that I start getting this uh, mask that will hopefully conform to the edges here a little bit better than it is doing at the moment. Let's try this. Try to find an, try to find an area here where this will do a better job. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit of work. Again, for the patient types, it's not so bad. So what I've just done is I've clicked and dragged kind of right on the lip there and that should do a fairly good job of isolating that section if I let go without it um, sort of moving off of there. Close enough. Okay. Oh and look it's left the back end. That's not too big of a deal. Okay. Because here's what I'll do. Uh, I'm going to come out of the move tool now, make sure to go back to draw mode. And if I hold down control and alt, that will allow me to draw a, um, uh, a mask that subtracts the, the mask. So just control, alt, click and drag, and I'm just going to bring that up to the edges there, corners. And control, alt, just do that again. There we go. I got rid of all that extra stuff. I could probably have done that to begin with. It just um, instead of having, if if going into the move tool was kind of a pain for you, um, you could just simply drag a hold down control and drag a mask around everything, right? Uh, and that will mask out everything. And then you could just go in and hold down uh, control and alt and just drag a mask up like that as well. I didn't even think about doing that until just now. So there you go. If for whatever reason you need to invert the mask, it's just hit control and tap off uh, off of the model. There you go. All right, so I've, maybe I've really belabored that point. <laughs> Sorry. I do like to explain things, though, because for many people, ZBrush is kind of this crazy, uh, difficult program to, to deal with. So now if I uh, go up here and bring my intensity back up to 100 for my smooth tool, uh, I'm going to be smoothing up to the edges there, but it's not affecting those corners. So that's that's good. Now you got to respect the fact that um, I am taking a long time to do this simply because I'm talking through the process. If you were doing this on an average basis, you know, where you just, you know, you know what you're doing and uh, you are not having to think about creating a tutorial at the same time, uh, you'd be able to blast through this much, much faster. Okay. Nice and smooth, right? Uh, to get rid of the 
uh, mask, control, click and drag off of the model. There we go. And I think it's probably a smart idea at this stage to simply save uh, what we have. Um, and I'll stop the video here. But to save uh, what we have right now, we'll go to in the tool menu, save as. And I'll save this as our, uh, I'll just call this Signet. And I save in versions because uh, I think it's smart. I'll call this Signet 01. Now this will be my base. In fact, I might just call it Signet Base. And that way I know that uh, if I need to, if anything goes wrong, I can always refer back to this. So I'll hit save. All right, uh, I'm going to stop the video here. And in the next lesson, we will actually, as promised in this lesson, uh, move on to doing some projections.